My name is Michelle DeRogers and I am a natural resource specialist with Jefferson County Open Space. And we are here this morning at Meyer Ranch Park and we're looking for a cool species of raptor called the Northern Goshawk. Uh, the reason that we're interested in this species on our properties is because they're very sensitive around their nest sites and we also know that they can be sensitive to human disturbance as well as forestry treatments. And those are two things that we have a lot of on our property, right? We have a lot of recreation and we also have this big forest management plan where we are trying to create more healthy, resilient forests to climate change and to wildfire. So knowing where our northern goshawks are, where their nests are, allows us to protect them. And that's one of the missions of Jefferson County Open Space is to protect our natural resources. Northern goshawks are in a group of birds called the occipiters. So they're birds that prey on other birds or small mammals. They're related to Cooper's hawks and sharp-shinned hawks, which we also have here in Colorado and in Jefferson County. But northern goshawks are actually the largest occipiter that we have in North America. They can be one and a half to three pounds, and that doesn't sound like much, but their wingspan is actually three and a half to four feet. Um, so they're a pretty large raptor. So today we're actually going to be doing something called a broadcast survey. And what that is, is we use a speaker with a call from the species that we're trying to attract. And we play it back in what we think is good habitat for them. And we see if we get a response. Um, this is a really effective way to find species like northern goshawk. Um, we also do surveys for fl flammulated owls the same way. Um, I will say that playback surveys or broadcast surveys should really only be done by professionals. We're doing this for scientific purposes and for purposes of managing these animals and protecting them on our properties. Um, I wouldn't recommend um, using playback recreationally and the American Birding Association actually has guidelines for the ethical use of playback in birding. Got him. Yep. So, circling above the trees. Hopefully he pokes his head up by us. So, an important part of any wildlife survey is keeping good notes. So, we have our custom data sheets for our goshawk surveys where we record what station we're at. We have a bunch of randomized stations across the property and then we record a bunch of information about if we get a detection, what time, and information about that bird that we do detect. One of the things that we do when we get a detection of a bird is we want to map where we found that bird. So we'll take a compass bearing, which is what Chelsea is doing right now, and we'll measure a distance to where that bird was. And then later we can put that in our computer geographic information system software and at the end of the season, we'll have a whole bunch of points of where we've detected these birds. 224 degrees distance, 14.5 meters, and we use the adult alarm call. Cool. Northern goshawks tend to live in mature forests, and they actually live around the world in the northern hemisphere. Here in Colorado, they're mostly associated with ponderosa pine forests, mixed conifer forests, and also they'll actually nest in aspen stands they tend to use the largest tree in a stand for their nest. And they like those mature forests with a really closed canopy and an open understory to hunt their favorite prey, which could be anything from jays to robins to squirrels. And they'll actually even take snowshoe hares that are twice their size. They're very aggressive hunters. They're short, broad wings 
allow them really powerful flapping flight and they have long tails that act like rudders. And so they're super maneuverable in the forest. Uh, Northern goshawks are year-round residents here in Colorado. They may undertake some small elevational migrations throughout the year where they'll move down to lower elevations in the winter and back up again in the summer for breeding. So this time of year, we're in March, um, they tend to be arriving back on their breeding grounds, undergoing courtship, building a nest or adding material to their nest. They actually will reuse nests from year to year, which is one of the reasons why it's so important that we find their nest locations, so we can protect them from year to year. We found one goshawk on one of our survey points today. We're very excited about it. It's still early in the season, so maybe not nesting yet. We'll definitely follow up. Again, it's important um, to do this kind of work to know where this sensitive species is on our parks. They reuse their nests from year to year, and they're very sensitive to human disturbance. So what you can do as a visitor to our parks is you can stay on trail and keep your dogs on a leash and give wildlife some space.